Hello everybody, Loader for Life here, bringing us a brand new deck profile. This time around, it is my Orcus PK deck that I've been working on a lot. I've been having a lot of fun with this build, and with the new stuff that finally came out, I I feel like I can I feel like I'm ready to do this deck. <laughs> I'm a I've had a lot of fun with this deck. It's got a lot of really cool combos and uh, plays it can do, and you can just set up so much stuff and really, really lock down your opponent. I focus more on a bit of a lockdown kind of a build. I know a lot of people just focus on making a uh, topologic bomber dragon and calling it a day, but I'm not a big fan of just focusing on bomber dragon. Don't get me wrong, I do play him because he is a wing condition, but just focusing on him gets kind of boring sometimes. It's just me. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so let's get on to deck profile. First and foremost, we got triple world legacy world one. Really good card overall. And the big thing is, is that it has two major effects that you do use. It does have another one that doesn't really matter too much, but the two big ones is uh, whenever it's sent from the, anywhere to the graveyard, you can summon a World Legacy from your hand. So if you ultimate multiples and you send one to the graveyard, you can summon one from your hand. Pretty handy. Uh, and then if it's uh, in your graveyard, you can banish it, target one of your banished dark uh, machine monsters, except for a copy of itself, special summon it. So yeah, really good overall, and uh, I could have sworn, oh okay, yeah, it actually specifically says Orcus. I could have sworn it said that, but my brain just froze for a second. So yeah, specifically says Orcus monster, brings back one of your banished Orcus, and then, well, yeah, <laughs> it's a monster born for the banished zone. Kinda goes without saying that. Anyways, <laughs> moving on, we got the new level seven Orcus, Orchestrated Nightmare, which I also play three of. Uh, this thing's a level seven, as I mentioned. Kind of important for one of the cards I play in my extra deck. It's uh, got one under attack, which is important for Machine Dupe. And then, of course, 2,000 defense. And cool thing about it is it can't be a sword in battle by a Link monster. Won't come in, won't, won't come into play at all, in all honesty. But the big thing is that while it's in the graveyard, you can banish it, target a mo monster you control. Well, I believe it specifically says dark monster. Uh, you control and then send any dark machine from your deck to the graveyard except the copy of itself to increase the attack of the monster you targeted by the monster's level that you sent uh, times like, I believe, 100 or 200. Uh, yeah, times 100, which it's not important at all. You don't care about the attack buff. buff. The big thing is, you sent the dude into your graveyard. It's another m m Foolish Burial. <laughs> it really is. That's the big thing. It's just another Foolish Burial. You get another Orcus near your graveyard, and then you can continue off from there. The attack boost does come in handy every now and then, but not often. The big thing is you're getting a dude in a graveyard. <laughs> Moving on, we got Orcus Harp Horror. Uh, at three as well. Uh, basically, you banish him from your graveyard, summon an Orcus from deck. There you go. Can't summon himself though, so that's a bit annoying, but summon anybody else. Orcus, uh, symbol skeleton, banish him from the graveyard, summon any Orcus from your graveyard except a copy of himself. <laughs> Kinda goes without saying. Really good card too. And then we got Orcus, uh, Bass Bombard. Uh, b Bombard here. <clears throat> banish him from your graveyard, summon Orcus from your hand except himself. Cool, and he's little, he's got 500 uh, attack, which perfectly puts him into the range for machine dupe. And then again, he's also a level one, which puts him for one for one. And Link Kribo, just thing is stupid. I love it. <laughs> it just helps get the deck rolling so easily. And it's a tuner, which you can use for well other cool stuff like making synchros and everything. Moving on, we got triple uh, uh, Phantom Knights of Ragged Gloves. Kind of goes without saying, we are playing the PK version. You banish it from your graveyard, send any fan on from your deck to graveyard, and if he's used for the link summon of a dark monster, boom, thousand more attack points. Cool. Ancient Cloak, banish him from your graveyard, search out any fan on well, the fan on because it specifically has to have D, the, T H E, <laughs> in front <laughs> of the rest of the name. Kind of important there because a lot of fan Knight spells and traps don't have that on there, and it's kind of annoying, so yeah. <laughs> Then we got Phantom Knights of uh, Silent Boots, who says if you control a Phantom Knights monster, summon himself from your hand, and you can banish him from your graveyard. Just search out any Phantom Knights spell or trap card, regardless of whether or not it has the T-H-E in front of it. <laughs> really good card again as well. You play the three best Phantom Knights, everybody knows what to do. Uh, that's why I'm kind of blazing through them. This deck is so simple with the monster lineup, it's not something to really stick on for too long. <laughs> That is it. You notice I don't even bother if I'm a Knight or Dark Refer. I haven't played them in any build of this deck. I completely forgot they existed, and now that they're both at one, I don't even think they're really worth playing. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. 
and got triple orchestrated return. It's literally a trade in for Orcus Emerald Legacy. Play three. <laughs> it's also searchable, so yeah. Then I played double orchest uh, orchestrated babble. I'm kind of been floating between playing one and two of this because it is recurrable. Uh, if it's in your graveyard, except to turn it with sent there, you can pitch a card out of your hand and add it to your hand from your graveyard. Uh, and then while it's on the field, orchest monster effects become quick effects. That that is stupid. <laughs> it makes your orchest quick effects. Which means the ones in the graveyard can do all the summoning during your opponent's turn, which is the entire point to the bomber dragon version. And then during your turn also, it's just the combos, the wombos, the combo wombos. It's so, so good. Uh, it also makes your link monsters quick effects as well, which means some very nasty stuff for your opponent. And then I know this is going to be a big sticking point because I know the stigma behind these kind of cards. But uh, trust me, it works. <laughs> To the rank up magic of Phantom Knight's launch. Okay, we just got a million different dislikes. Cool. Anyway, so for the people who are sticking with it, uh, this card is for one thing searchable by both Phantom Knight searchers, and secondly, the monster you use to the monster you make out of this is incredibly good and incredibly nasty for just what you can do with it and the rest of the lockdown. It is really, really powerful. You target one Dark Exceeds monster you control with no Exceeds materials on it, rank it up into a Dark Exceeds monster, one rank higher, and yeah, <laughs> you just proceed to go off from there. Uh, really, really good card overall. I'm very, very handy with what it can do and everything, uh, making all sorts of really good plays for this deck. Moving on, we got two machine duplication. Oh yeah, I meant to. Uh, also, got to mention this card also attaches itself to the Exceeds monster as Exceeds material, and then you can banish it to attach a Phantom Knight from your hand to Exceeds material. Yeah, just kind of something to mention. Double machine dupe kind of goes without saying. I feel like three is a bit bricky, but hey, two or three, whatever you want. Uh, one orchestrated Einsatz. I used to be playing two, but I found that one is just better to go with. It is a bit bricky, it's easily searchable, and it is a hard once per turn in your first turn. So it, it is it's general just recur like constant resource management, but however, uh, one seems to be just better. Next up, one monster reborn, kind of goes without saying, one full burial, a bite, one rota, and then one full burial. <laughs> Uh, Rota for the Phantom Knights, obviously, and then Full Spiral because everybody wants to be in the graveyard. And then finally, for the three traps to play, two Phantom Knights, a Fog Blade, and then one Phantom Knights Wing. Kind of just real, the best Phantom Knights trap cards. <laughs> Moving on to the extra deck. Alrighty, first up, two Galatea, the Orcist Automaton. Uh, kind of goes without saying, this is one of the best cards in the deck. Uh, basically, you just shuffle in one of your banished uh, Dark Machines to the deck, set any of your Orcus Spell or Trap cards directly from the deck. <coughs> you know, just getting a free Spell or Trap card, that is, is really good. While she's uh, connected to a monster, well, linked to it, to a monster, she cannot be destroyed by battle, so the low attack points makes up for that. Kind of goes hand in hand. Uh, yeah, <laughs> moving on to... Nongirsu, the orchest, uh, orchestra, uh, orchestrator, <laughs> god, uh, tongue twisters. Uh, sorry, did I say Link 2? Link 3. Uh, 2500 attack, really good effect here. You shuffle back two dudes from your, uh, well, two of your banished dark machines, from your banished to the dark, to the deck, obviously, and then you send one of your opponent's linked monsters to the graveyard. Not link monsters, but linked monsters. Monsters that are linked to another monster, which is obviously why he is connect. He has two up pointing arrows alongside, well, with Galatea and stuff. Uh, and then also, while he's can link to a monster, he cannot be used to write card effects. Kind of, again, goes without saying on why he's so good. <laughs> Moving on, one link Kribo combos really well with Orcus Bombard. Um, you know, just gets him in the graveyard real easily, and his card is still stupid. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, one Nightmare Cerberus, just for the general popping. Same thing with Phoenix. Uh, there's good old, Gu uh, I almost called him Gumblar. Bomber Dragon for, well, obviously the Bomber uh, Lock. One Orcustrion for the boss monster. This thing is stupid. Uh, thanks to the field spell, while it's, uh, you know, during your first turn, makes it a quick effect. Uh, you shuffle back, what was it? I think three uh, banished, yeah, three banished uh, dark machines back into the deck. 
and then negate all Vinked monsters and drop them at their attack and defense to zero that your opponent controls. So basically this makes it to where if your opponent's going for an extra link and they failed, so they have just like one zone open left still, you make this dude and then you drop everything to zero and make their effects negated. I've done this to people before, it's really, really silly. I love it, it's such a good card. And then also of course while he's linked to, to a monster, he cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects, making him quite a fearsome foe. Moving on to the XCs, uh, one Dante, the travel, Traveler of the Burning Abyss for milling and everything. One, the Phantom Knights of Break Sword uh, for just general popping and stuff. Uh, one, Dark Rebellion XCs Dragon because this thing, uh, you use him and the rank up magic to make good old Dark Requiem XCs Dragon, who is a stupid monster. I love this thing. So basically, while well, he has Dark Rebellion attached to Advanced Xyz material, uh, during your player's turn, if your opponent activates a monster effect, you can detach one Xyz material from him, negate that monster effect, destroy it, and then you can summon any of your Dark uh, Xyz monsters from your graveyard. And that's not a once per turn. <laughs> uh, so that's just negating and free advantage. And then also you can you can detach an Xyz material from this thing to drop one of your opponent's monsters attack to zero and he gains that monster's attack power. A uh, very, 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 very powerful card overall. Just absolutely stunning. Very, very cool. I love him a lot. Very scary boss monster. Now, if you don't want to make him, you can make Azathoth during your opponent's turn. <laughs> Which is mean as heck. So basically, let's say you tried to go for game. You use Darker Baron's effect to jump up his attack power. Try to go for game. You failed. It's your opponent's turn. You flip over to rank up Magic Phantom Knights of Launch, making Azathoth locking out of your opponent's uh, extra deck for the remainder of the turn. Really, really scary uh, thing, you know, uh, not extra deck, but you know, monster effects. Might as well just be their extra deck depending on what they're playing. Very, very scary card to be used on your opponent's turn. Very, very powerful. I, I can't, I, I cannot state how powerful this card is. <laughs> and finally, for the one synchro I wanted to play because he is that good, like, uh, occasionally, and he makes a really good win condition in tandem with the Bomber Dragon, is good old Beals of the Diabolic Dragons. Thanks to uh, good old uh, the level 7 coming out, Nightmare, you basically get out her alongside Bombard, and you make uh, Beals alongside uh, Bomber Dragon. So then you have two 3k beaters, one of whom can't be destroyed by battle or card effects, and that includes your Bomber Dragon, so you don't have to worry about your Bomber Dragon destroying your stuff. You can also do this in tandem with Orchestrion or Longurusu, so then you have those two guys who also can't be destroyed by card effects. So then you have your whole like set of monsters that can't be destroyed by card effects, and Bomber Dragons is keeping your opponent from summoning any more monsters. Really good, I like it. <laughs> it's very mean. Uh, again, I, I can't state how much I love this combo. It's really roaming. You'll notice that I do not play the Phantom Knights of Rusty Bardish. That is because uh, the reason why I stopped playing Bardish is because he cannot be used as Link material. So that means if you don't uh, time it right or you make him at the wrong moment, which I'm going to be honest, I'm not the best Yu-Gi-Oh player. Uh, oftentimes he'd be locked into my extra monster zone and that's not where you really want him. He is a very good card, yes, but however, uh, considering I'm not playing too many of the uh, Phantom Knights, Spells and Traps, and this thing's kind of hard to make in the deck, I don't like him in this particular build. Maybe in a more pure build or just a different build, I don't know. Uh, but I'm not a big fan of him in this particular build of Phantom Knight. Uh, Orcus. So, yeah, I'm not playing him. Uh, if you guys do have any ideas, recommendations, or concerns, though, I am all ears. So, guys, that is my build of good old Phantom Knight Orcus. I've been having, again, I've been having a lot of fun with this deck. I know, like, I say that a lot of my videos, but I try to play decks that I know I'm going to have fun with, especially with uh, as of late, because, let's be honest, Yu-Gi-Oh! hasn't been the most fun game as of late due to the constant, just very fun metagame of FTKs and LTKs, but I digress. So, yeah, what do you guys think of Phantom Knight Orcus? Do you think that they're worth the hype coming up with the new stuff coming out in the next set, and Dark Neo Storm? I mean, uh, do you think that it's worth it? What do you guys think? Rate, comment, subscribe. Thank you all for watching. Have a great day. If it's your birthday, happy birthday. See y'all later. Peace out.